Hello and welcome to Orient Outreach. I'm your host, Katie Shimatero, and in today's episode, I'm here with Pat Nolf, founder of the Pink Ribbon Trailblazers. Thanks for joining us today, Pat. Well, thank you for having me. Oh, of course. Now, I know you've been on the show a couple times in the mm -hmm. past, but for new viewers that are maybe just seeing this for the uh -huh. first time, tell us a little bit about the Pink Ribbon Trail Trailblazers. Okay. Um, we, uh, in 2007, um, I had re took, I had recovery um, from having breast cancer and I started uh, volunteering at St. Joe Hospital. And the more that I got to know the nurse navigator, I uh, actually thought, well, gee, I want to do something for her in the breast program. And uh, my husband and I were going down to um, Troy, Michigan, and uh, we stopped and he uh, I went in to get a coffee and I had thought that we would do something on the Pollyann Trail. And there was Larry Obrick, who at that time had got the federal and the state funding for the Pollyann Trail. So that's when we began in the fall of 2007, raising funds for women who don't have insurance and we put a limitation on it and it's women in Oakland County. But it's been very successful and I am I feel like I'm blessed just to uh, meet some of these women and I go to all the clinics and it's just uh, very heartwarming for me. Wonderful. So you like you mentioned, you guys provide mm -hmm. mammogram screenings mm -hmm. for uninsured women in all of Oakland County, that is? Yes, yes. Wonderful. Um, do Now, how much farther does it go than just the mammogram screening? Say they get, they get one back diagnosed. and, God forbid, mm -hmm. it comes back positive. Do you guys do anything mm -hmm. from there? Yes. The, um, what we've done even since the beginning when I approached the fund development department at St. Joe, um, I said, well, what if these women are diagnosed? What happens to them then? Mm -hmm. And that's when I met uh, some of the other people uh, that are involved in breast cancer health services. And what, uh, what came about is that they uh, stipulated an amount that a mammog mammogram would cost. And it goes by, um, at that time, Medicare guidelines, which is 108. And then, uh, so we have uh, four clinics a year, and then we also have four Wednesday afternoons where if a doctor has a script, or the woman has a script, mm -hmm. she can come in and get a free mammogram. From there, if she is diagnosed, then there is a procedure in place. That particular day, um, they also receive a private screening from Dr. Amy Kirby, who's just this little tiny thing, and, and she has great surgical hands, though, and, and very professional yet kind when she asks the gals to come in for the private screening. And then that's where uh, the rest of it starts. We have at these clinics a woman that's a nurse navigator. And what she does, in case if you hear that you have breast cancer, mm -hmm. you're just so overwhelmed that you can't really uh, imagine, well, what do I do? Who do I go to? Of course. And so that's where the, um, the nurse navigator comes in, and her name's uh, Andrea Ferris. Mm -hmm. So she guides this, this woman and say, of course, she doesn't have any money because if she did have enough money, she would have paid for her insurance. So what they have in place is, we. oh, and I wanted to backtrack for a minute. Mm -hmm. Say that woman needs more uh, testing, the Pink Ribbon Trailblazers also pay for an ultrasound. Oh, wonderful. Yes, and so then when that happens, the surgeon will be Dr. Kirby, unless this woman wants some other doctor. And she will meet uh, with what's called a uh, finance navigator. And under the umbrella of what used to be the Alice Gustafson Center, mm -hmm. um, these women are all together in one area. The mammography is on the second floor, but on the first floor is all like um, all the 
inferences that you need to make a program successful. And uh, she meets with, uh, with her, and obviously they want to have some kind of a payment in place, but if this woman is just making it from day to day, they will still do the surgery. And they have a couple programs in place. Um, it's, there's a federal program now, and also um, there's a state program that will pick up some of these women that we can't help all the way. Wow, so yeah. there's a large team involved with mm -hmm. this. It's mm -hmm. wonderful. Now, I imagine you guys have to do a good amount of fundraising oh, for something yes. like this. Tell us about some of the things mm -hmm. you guys are involved with. Well, for years we had um, a walk, run, um, bike, uh, 20 miles on the Pollyann Trail. Oh, and what we would do is in order to get the funds, we would say, well, if you, um, if you can come up with $108 or $100, um, we will give you one of our pink ribbon trailblazer t-shirts and it's similar to what's on um, the front of our uh, um, calendars and so that worked rather well and then we decided that we would add an auction and the local businesses contributed and so we raised money that way also and, and one of the nicest gifts that they gave to me in order to auction up was a pink garbage can, an actual size from Odd Jobs. Oh. And uh, so I knew my girlfriend really wanted it, and I wanted it too. Yeah. <laughs> so as it turned out, when she got to over 100, then I said, okay, it's yours. I won't bump you up anymore. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so we had, we had a lot of fun one day. One, year it rained and it rained and it rained and when the bikers came back of course you have to hold on with the handlebars and uh, they had on rain suits but then when they got off their bikes and the one girl went and she lifted up her um, elastic on her sleeve and the water the rain just poured out <laughs> but oh, gosh. <laughs> they weren't friends before they began on the trail mm -hmm. but the four of them now have still remain to be friends and uh, they oh, help great. me sometimes and and we always have to refer to the rainy day <laughs> yeah <laughs> wonderful yeah. um now you mentioned your calendars. Let's mm -hmm. talk a little bit about that. You have sure. these beautiful calendars that you make mm -hmm. every year that highlight women in the community that have been or are survivors of breast yes. cancer themselves. So um, tell us a little bit about that and okay. how that got started. Yes. Um, there's this wonderful man that I met quite by coincidence and his name's Henry Hopkins and he's a local photographer and uh, he was sitting with one of my friends in one of the businesses in um, Oxford. And I had just come from golfing and I came in to say hello to my friend, Lisi, and she owns Ella Fashions, downtown Oxford. And I said, oh boy, I, said, I need to get someone to um, help me with, with the uh, t-shirts mm -hmm. to, and so Henry, I just met him and he said, well, I could probably do that. And I go, well, it's $350. And he said, well, no problem. I'd be proud to do that. And I go, where did this gift come from? Wow, yeah. <laughs> and that was the start of our relationship in 2012. And he sent me a check for $400. And I go, no, I called him. I said, no, it's just $350. He said, oh, well, I know you could use the extra $50 someplace else. Wow. So he's been a very giving um, he casually mentioned to both of us that he said, I, you know, I thought about having a program and, and, and someday doing a calendar of women with breast cancer. And I said, oh, and my brain started working. And uh, so then about a month later, he happened to be in the shop again. And I go, Henry, I have all the women for the calendar. He goes, oh, oh, wait a minute. I thought we were talking about next year. And I go, well, they're all there waiting to meet you. And uh, so then that was our first calendar in 2012. And um, in the last past three years, not even counting this year's calendar, 
um, we've raised over $20,000 for women uh, to be uh, used for mammograms and ultrasound. So Wow, that's amazing. Thank you. And, and it's been fun and, and very, um, I'm very empathetic. And so when I hear all these stories, and even the stories from the women at the clinics, it just touches my heart. And it's almost like this is my payback. This is why, this is why I do what I do, because um, I really spend a lot of time uh, trying to raise funds. And, and so far, we've been very successful. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. How do you um, find these women to contribute mm -hmm to these calendars. I know not only do they have their gorgeous photos in there, mm -hmm. but they, they give a really nice inspirational quote of mm -hmm. how they coped with dealing with cancer and how they kind yes. of made their journey. So what's mm -hmm. it like for them to do for, that? For them, it's, uh, for most of them, it's almost like an awakening. Hey, there are other women and, and we get together We'll have one in the afternoon and one in the evening mm -hmm. so that we can they can meet Henry and feel comfortable with him. And just to backtrack for a minute, you said, where do I get these women? Mm -hmm. Mainly, it's through someone who knows someone who knows someone. Or it could be, um, I've had friends of mine, and, and in this year's calendar, there's a member from Pink Creek Country Club. And uh, actually, she wanted to be in the original um, calendar and she and her husband were sent to England for three years so when she came back I said all right Nancy you're up and uh, um, it, it's just all different kind of sources or uh, sometimes um, the nurse navigator navigator at St. Joe will say well Pat I think I have this girl that uh, um, would really enjoy being in the calendar mm -hmm. and so they come from that way also and uh, the the main way that we make this uh, these funds from the calendar is that the people that that are near and dear to them want to support the program so um, they they might take uh, 20 calendars and sell them or or maybe 10 if they're shy and and uh, it it just it just kind of fingers out mm -hmm. and uh, um, in fact on Sunday we're getting together with Henry to thank him at uh, uh, we're meeting at Cruz and Muir on Maine and that's when we get to tell our story if we want or share some more and uh, it gives us the chance to personally um, see Henry and, and his wife's invited also. And, and uh, um, it's a little payback for, for Henry for being so um, wonderful about helping us out. Oh, great. Yeah. Now, working with these women that have gone through a similar journey that you've gone through, mm -hmm. do you find yourself building kind of lasting friendships with these women and mm -hmm. keeping memories every year? Yes, def definitely, definitely. And, and uh, there's two members I belong to, Christ the Redeemer, and there's three um, calendar women that are there. And then okay. we see each other, and, and I like to um, uh, let them know uh, how we're still doing. Because mm -hmm. if they're mm -hmm. in the 2012 calendar, and, and they don't have any, uh, well, say for example, what we're doing here today, mm -hmm. a lot of them are from this area, so they will know like how much we've made totally and how, how far we've come Great. Um, since that first uh, uh, day. <laughs> yeah. It, it was very strange. We had a, a karaoke machine <laughs> in oh, yeah. order to speak and get to the crowds. and. And about five minutes before we were going to start the program, I go, oh, dear God, what if no one comes? Oh. And uh, I thought to myself and the three other women who came up with this idea that what uh, um, we wanted to do something special, mm -hmm. and yet uh, if, <laughs> if it fell, what, what was going to be our next plan? So it, it was 
wonderful that when the people started arriving and I had wanted to have enough money for 30 mammograms. And then as it turned out from all the wonderful people who gave to the Pink Ribbon Trailblazers, we could give them, go to um, St. Joe Mercy, um, Oakland's uh, Breast Health Services, and give them a hundred and I think it was thirty thousand dollars. So, um, wow. yeah. So it it was just very special. I'm I'm wrong with that figure. It was thirteen thousand. Okay. <laughs> Not yeah. That's a, a large amount. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have to keep our money straight. Here. Yeah. <laughs> Which reminds me, um, one of the nice things about owning or having a nonprofit mm -hmm. is before we decided to do that, it was actually my husband Dean's um, idea to have something on the Pollyann Trail. But he um, said that he would be, we have a board and uh, um, he's the finance chair and he takes care of all the money because um, I'm, I'm not that good about keeping records, yeah. <laughs> I just know this is coming in and that's going out. But in order to be um, a 501c3 through the IRS, you have to prove where you got your money and what you're doing with that money and according to your mission statement. Mm -hmm. And our mission statement is to enable uninsured or underinsured women in Oakland County to have a free mammogram and if necessary an ultrasound so we have to we have to live and act within that parameter okay great great um so now i know you've been kind of nationally recognized for the work that you do here yes. in lake orion which is wonderful um by the massachusetts general hospital cancer center through their annual the 100 every day amazing which honors people that are very active with um uh the fight against breast cancer and inspiring others mm -hmm. to take action which you definitely are doing um yes. so tell us about going in um last year in 2014 you were an honorary honorary right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so tell us about yep. that yep actually i will be one of the 100 until june of 2015 so oh, okay. it lasts a year and um, uh, one of the girls that was in the calendar from from last year um, had nominated me much to my I had no no fathom that this that I would be selected over a thousand other um, nonprofits worldwide oh, wow. and when I received the letter I looked at it and I looked at it and I go you know I think I have heard of Massachusetts General <laughs> and uh, um, then I received a phone call from a woman called Jen Ryan and she was my coordinator and uh, um, so on June 10th of this year, we flew to Boston, and we were um, uh, in the in the hotel on the waterfront, and I call it my Alice in Wonderland story because never in a thousand years would I ever have thought that I would be recognized, and uh, I kind of thought, well, is it because I'm a four-time cancer survivor, or is it because I'm uh, helping other women and I really feel it's because that I've helped uh, not just me but the Pink Ribbon Trailblazers mm -hmm. have helped so many women and uh, of all ages and uh, um, it's nice to be able to say that no we won't turn you away if we're going to have a mammogram program we're not going to just say well I'm sorry you have breast cancer and then you know go on your merry way it's, uh, I think, one of the big reasons is because St. Joe is a Catholic hospital. Mm -hmm. But that particular night um, was just wonderful because uh, uh, Matt Damon was our, our speaker. Wow. And when he smiles, you just, I can see why everyone just thinks that he is really, and, and his grandfather was a patient there which oh. is why he does, um, he's the MC almost every year. Wow. And, uh, and then we had another uh, person who actually spoke other than the doctors in the hospital, because it was their big fundraiser, was um, Valerie Harper. 
So her problem was similar. She had lung cancer, mm -hmm. and it's similar to what I have. And uh, um, when her doctor, her normal doctor, uh, told her, her uh, that she um, was we have no treatment for you and I think you should just go and live the rest of your life. Well, she happens to know Matt Damon and she knows a Massachusetts general. Mm -hmm. So she packed up her bags and she got an appointment with one of the doctors affiliated with Mass, they call it Mass General because it's such a mouthful. <laughs> and. Uh, um, so he uh, did, did a CAT scan or an MRI, I'm not sure which, but he determined that it wasn't brain cancer that she was told, it was her lung cancer that went up into her brain. Oh, wow. Yes, and, and uh, so from the point where she first started taking, it's a new drug and I really don't know the name of it, but she took that for, it was either six or nine months, and when she had her latest CAT scan, there is no cancer in her brain at all. So wow. she she um, was very receptive, and she loves life. She gave us all her book, Rhoda, and had autographed it, and uh, um, I specifically wanted to meet her so in between the dinner and um, dessert, mm -hmm. my husband and I wandered over there and, and I have a few photos um, of her and I and, and we have some similarities, not just having lung cancer, but she talks with her hands too. So <laughs> just like, okay, <laughs> yeah. a friend. <laughs> and uh, she, she was just delightful and all the other um, 100 people that I met and, and some of them uh, were, there was a group from Botswana. So it, it was just so um, heartwarming to mm -hmm. meet all of these people and uh, um, it's something that I'll treasure for the rest of my life. And uh, yeah, it's always a great honor. <laughs> Wonderful, yes, that's definitely a great honor, yeah. a great accomplishment, and well-deserved. Thank you. Um, now tell us a little bit about, um, you have these calendars mm -hmm. coming up for sale mm -hmm. soon now, what's mm -hmm. the details with that? Right, um, I'm glad they give you the details. On my website, if someone would like to order um, a calendar, you go to the website and it's very easy um, through PayPal. And the day that you order it, I will either have it out in the mail to you or the following day. And there's no shipping cost. And uh, um, I think that uh, the way that I feel and I hope that people who watch this show, that when we sell five calendars, that's $100. So that means one free mammogram for one uninsured woman. Yes. And uh, you, you don't realize how, when they come to the clinics, they think, oh boy, it's free, I'm gonna be here all day. Mm -hmm. And it's not true. We have three mammographers that give up their Saturday and until about 1.30 or 2, mm -hmm. they're there. And uh, we've had the system, and Andrea's there, the nurse navigator, and Dr. Uh, Kirby, and then myself. And my role is just to make them feel comfortable. And uh, um, they're always so appreciative and really astounded that they're you know, saying, oh, I'm being, I'm being treated special. It's not like, okay, get going here and then you're gonna go there. And, and it's just a very, we have uh, some snacks for them and water and uh, um, just let them get some of their uh, feelings out. And uh, so they all, I usually end up with hugging them. And uh, um, one woman, um, she came three different years, and I happened to bump into her, and I said, oh, we didn't see you this year. And she said, I actually have a job, and I have my own insurance now. So oh, it, was, wonderful. it was nice to run into her. That is. There's a lot, of, a lot of paybacks to um, chairing the Pink Ribbon Trailblazers. Definitely. Well, great. We've talked about how 
people can purchase these mm -hmm. calendars, a little bit about the Pink Ribbon Trailblazers, but most importantly, these uninsured women in Oakland County, how can they go about actually going and signing mm -hmm. up and receiving these mammograms? Um, well, if they go to my website, or actually, um, some of the women, I always ask them, how did you hear about the Pink Ribbon Trailblazer? Mm -hmm. Well, in this computer age, a lot of them will Google uh, and say, f and ask free mammogram. Mm -hmm. And then my site comes up, and it has the number, and I know the, hun the number by heart because I've uh, said it so many times. And, and that number is also on the website. It's 1-800-372-6094. And again, the dates are in the calendar. And uh, the number that you call, you do that approximately six weeks before the actual clinics. And the dates are listed again in the calendar and then on the website. So we just have to remember pink rib ribbon trailblazers and, and then we'll hopefully take care of you. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Pat. We appreciate you being here and all the great work you do in Oakland County. Okay, and thank you for having me. It was delightful to sit and chat with you. Of course. <laughs> That's all the time we have for this episode of Orient Outreach. A special thanks to Pat Nolf and the Pink Ribbon Trailblazers for joining us today. For more information on the Pink Ribbon Trailblazers or to purchase your own 2015 calendar, visit their website at pinkribbontrailblazers.com. And for more episodes of Orient Outreach, visit orionontv.com to see what local nonprofit organizations are doing throughout the community. Until next time, I'm your host, Katie Shimatero. Thanks for watching. Machine.